Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. So we've already covered a fair few of Intel's CPU related announcements from a couple of days ago, including the Z390 chipset and motherboard launch to the new eight core processors. And hopefully you all saw Steve's video yesterday covering Intel's ridiculous commission benchmarks of the 9900K more than a week before anyone can report independent performance numbers. In fact, if you happen to miss our update to that video, we discovered that the commission benchmarks were even worse than we first thought, if that's even possible, uh, because all testing was done with the Ryzen 7 2700X configured as a quad core through game mode. Yep, pretty unbelievable stuff, really but that's what they did to get such massive margins. Check our Patreon post with the new graphs and all the details. Links to that are in the description below. Also, Intel has responded to us and others with the statement, basically doubling down and saying the testing is valid. Check out Gamers Nexus latest video for that statement, but wow, seriously, Intel? Anyway, let's move on. Uh, today, we're talking about something a little different. It's time to talk about the other thing Intel announced, their new line of high-end desktop chips in the form of Skylake X Refresh and the 28-core Xeon W 3175X. Remember the 28-core processor? Yeah, that's the one Intel first announced at Computex 2018. It's been capable of 5 gigahertz, except only with what was later discovered to be exotic cooling and a ridiculous overkill motherboard. At the time, you might have seen our video comparing Intel's misleading 28-core demo to AMD's announcement of 32-core Threadripper, an actual product that ended up as the 2990WX. That processor, it was a bit disappointing in how it performed in some workloads, but it did actually get released as a product that closely matched what AMD announced at Computex. So let's take a look at what Intel's 28-core CPU has ended up as after the fiasco at Computex. Well, the company decided to call it the Xeon W 3175X, and it's based on their Cascade Lake architecture. It also, in what shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, is compatible only with Intel's LGA3647 server socket. So those currently using X299 boards with the LGA2066 socket can't just drop in this new CPU without a full platform upgrade. The Threadripper 2990WX was fully compatible with AMD's Socket TR4, an X399 chipset, but Intel doesn't have the luxury of socket compatibility with their new high core count CPUs. In terms of specifications, the Xeon Platinum 8180 has 28 cores, 38.5 megabytes of level three cache, 44 PCIe lanes direct to the CPU and six channels of DDR4 2666 memory support, either ECC or standard. Sorry, wait, did I say the Xeon Platinum 8180 before? Well, I meant the, of course, Xeon W3175X, bit of an easy mistake to make there because they're, of course, totally different CPUs. The 3175X does beef things up a bit compared to the 8180, though, especially in terms of clock speeds. Intel's totally different and not at all the same server chip is clocked at 2.5 gigahertz with a boost up to 3.8 gigahertz, whereas the 3175X is clocked at 3.1 gigahertz base and 4.3 gigahertz boost. This also means a TDP increase from 205 watts to 255 watts, not because this is basically an overclocked 8180 or anything, but because of some other reason? I don't know. It's also fully unlocked, like all of Intel's HEDT processors. The key thing to note here is Intel's 3175X is not clocked at 5 GHz, not as a base clock, not as an all-core turbo, and not even as a single-core turbo clock. And that's, of course, because reaching 5 GHz on a 28-core CPU is completely ridiculous for typical operating conditions. Can the 3175X hit 5 GHz using exotic cooling? Well, probably, but again, this brings us back to Intel's initial reveal of the 28-core HEDT chip. They showed it running at 5 GHz, plenty of websites gobbled that up, without even questioning it, and yet here we are, the actual chip has been officially released and it doesn't clock anywhere near 5 gigahertz. I do get that Intel came out and apologized for not mentioning that their demo involved an overclock CPU, but that whole setup left me and many of you guys with a sour taste in your mouth. I mean, it's not exactly the first time Intel has misled consumers, but that 28 core unveil was pretty bad. Of course, the key thing with this product that remains up in the air is the price tag. Intel's top-end 18-core Skylake X Refresh CPU, which we'll get to in a moment, costs $2,000 or so, while the Xeon Platinum 8180 costs a cool $10,000. Considering the Xeon W3175X is basically a better, higher-clocked 8180, who knows what sort of price tag it will command? Will Intel price it above the 8180? I mean, they can't make it too cheap, or Intel would cannibalize 8180 sales, so without a doubt, it will be 
a very, very expensive product and who knows how competitive it will be against AMD's 32 core offering. And then there's the motherboards built to support this processor, which appear virtually unchanged from what Intel used at Computex. The ASUS ROG Dominus Extreme has two 24 pin power connectors, plus four eight pin connectors and two six pins, plus a monstrous VRM solution. It's possible all these connectors are just to facilitate overclocking the chip, but that still seems like a ridiculous setup when again, the 2990WX works just fine on X399 boards and can be overclocked without needing two 24 pin connectors. And while we don't have pricing for the Dominus, you can bet it will be very expensive to go along with the 3175X. So like we predicted at Computex, it seems like the 3175X is a marketing stunt and Intel's attempt to have the world's fastest single socket CPU or something along those lines because it's highly unlikely that it will be a product worth purchasing for the vast majority of buyers. Even among those thinking of spending thousands of dollars just on a workstation CPU, this 28 core base will almost certainly be a much, much worse value buy than either Intel's LGA 2066 products or AMD's Threadripper. Now let's move into talking about Intel's Skylake X Refresh, otherwise known as Base and Falls Refresh. So what we have here is a selection of CPUs ranging from eight cores and 16 threads up to 18 cores and 36 threads, essentially replacing Skylake X with equivalent parts. The six core i7-7800X doesn't have a direct replacement with this refreshed lineup. Instead, the i7-9800X is an eight core chip and then it goes up from there. So there's a couple of interesting things to note here spec wise. Nearly every part has received a clock speed boost, both to the base and boost clock. The 18 core i9-9980XE jumps up from 2.5 gigahertz base and 4.4 gigahertz boost to 3.0 gigahertz base and 4.5 gigahertz boost within the same 165 watt TDP. Some chips have smaller bumps, but generally we're seeing gains from 100 to 400 megahertz. While the TDP isn't a good metric for power consumption, the fact that the chips have higher base clocks under the same TDP could suggest better efficiency, possibly from manufacturing them on 14 nanometer plus plus rather than 14 nanometer plus. We'll, we'll have to test them to find out for sure, of course. Other interesting things are all chips now have a 165 watt TDP. Previously, the 12 core and lower were 140 watts, but now everything is the full 165 watts. L3 cache has also been improved for the 12 core and lower CPUs, jumping from as low as 11 megabytes in the 8 core 7820X to 16.5 megabytes in the i7 9820X. The 8 core also gets a full 44 PCIe lanes. Previously, it was restricted to just 28 lanes. I'm guessing this was done to give people a reason to buy it over the 8 core i9 9900K, of course, on platforms like Z390. The other somewhat unusual thing is the introduction of a second 10 core process. It looks like this was done to keep the lineup at seven SKUs, but with Intel ditching the six core, they had to double up one SKU in some way. So the base model 9800X is now eight cores, the 9820X is 10 cores, and the 9900X, well, that resumes normal proceedings at 10 cores as well. Considering all Skylake X refresh chips are unlocked, you'd think the higher end 9900X wouldn't be worth buying as it's $100 more expensive and only gives you clock speed boosts you could definitely achieve on the 9820X with overclocking. However, the 9900X does feature more level three cache, which could come in handy depending on the workload. It won't be a big deal for a lot of users who would likely be better off with the 9820X, but there's at least one reason to go for the 9900X instead. Now that all that's out of the way, the most interesting thing by far here is that Intel hasn't been aggressive on pricing whatsoever. They've basically completely ignored AMD's Threadripper platform and gone with the exact same pricing they used for previous Skylake X parts. The i9-9980XE is the same $1,979 US, of course, tray price as the i9-7980XE, for example, and that holds true for the rest of the line. The only potentially better value product here is the $889 10-core i9-9820, X, which offers a $100 saving on the 10 core i9-7900X, but otherwise it's just a bit strange that nothing else has become more competitive. For example, AMD is currently selling the 16 core Threadripper 2950X for $900, which is a great buy as a versatile workstation CPU capable of handling most multi-core workloads with ease. Intel's direct competitor, 
is still just a 10 core CPU, which the 2950X will handily smoke in most workloads, whereas it's the 14 and 16 core chips that will be much more competitive. Yet the 14 core is still priced at around $1,400, $500 more than the 2950X, while the 16 core sets you back a huge $1,700. It just seems a little bizarre to me that Intel hasn't even bothered to make Skylake X more competitive. It's almost like they are straight up handing AMD a win in this market to ensure they don't eat any of their Xeon sales. Sure, when you compare this new generation solely to Intel's last generation of HEDT chips, you are getting slight clock speed bumps and more cash for the same price. But Intel was quite far behind Threadripper in terms of value, and after this launch, well, they remain so. And I haven't even mentioned AMD's 32 core 2990WX in this part of the video yet, which retails for $1,800 and will remain in competition with Intel's 18 core i9 9980XE at $2,000. Neither of these chips are great value buys, but again, it's interesting that in the workloads where AMD's multi die design excels, like 3D modeling and rendering, Threadripper will still be offering much more performance at a lower cost. So a bit of a strange launch here from Intel. We have new Skylake X refresh processors that don't seem any more competitive against Threadripper than the previous generation, with only minor clock speed bumps at the same price, alongside a 28-core chip that will likely cost a sweet fortune, requires a ridiculous motherboard with loads of power connectors, and doesn't clock anywhere near 5 gigahertz. I'm not really sure what the point of this lineup is. In many ways, I think Intel would have been better off simply keeping the original Skylake X on the market and giving it a price cut. That way they'd save engineering resources and would be more competitive with AMD. Instead, what we've got is a pretty disappointing refreshed lineup that really doesn't look like offering anything Intel didn't already provide. Perhaps their struggles with 10 nanometer have led to this. They can't transition HEDT or really any chips to 10 nanometers yet to make use of their long awaited new architecture and all the benefits of a node shrink. And they also can't add any more cores without redoing the entire design, which would be pointless on 14 nanometers. Or of course they could shift to a new platform and they did the latter with the Xeon W3175X. They can't simply bump up a six core CPU up to eight core and call it a day, which is pretty much what they did with the 9700K and 99. 900k. Let me know what you guys think about this new lineup in the comments below. Interested to hear your thoughts and whether you think any of these CPUs will be competitive with Threadripper. As always, subscribe for more content like this. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Consider supporting us on our Patreon to gain access to our exclusive Discord chat. And I'll catch you in the next one.